The author says, and we're continuing in the book of prayer, level three, facing the Qibla. Al-Basir said, and you know he's one of the explainers of the text of Abu Shuja. Qibla linguistically means direction. Al-Hisni said, Qibla is the name of what is faced. That is what is meant here technically, that which is faced, which is the Kaaba. The Kaaba is the Qibla. Unless you're praying a Sunnah prayer as a traveler, then your destination will be your Qibla. Thus, for anyone citing it, for anyone seeing it, or otherwise knowing it, anyone who sees it or otherwise knows it, so you know what knowledge means, inshallah. We've been going over those lessons about the meaning of knowledge. Anyone who sees the Kaaba or otherwise knows its exact location, his Qibla is the exact building of the presently constructed Kaaba. The exact building. So when we say it's the exact building, the very building, that means we're not saying it's the direction of one's Qibla is the direction of the Kaaba. This saying does not mean that his Qibla is the direction of the Kaaba. This saying means that his Qibla is the very Kaaba. The exact building of the presently constructed Kaaba. So named due to its height. Yeah, and it was called Kaaba because of its height. And one's Qibla is not its mere direction for those who are far. Not its mere direction for those who are far. Meaning, even those who are far, they have the same obligation. Their obligation is to face the very building of the Kaaba. Far here means they don't have knowledge. So they might think they know the direction of the Kaaba. They might be so confident they know the direction of the Kaaba, but they don't know it. They don't have knowledge of it according to what we know knowledge to mean. But that doesn't mean, though, this statement doesn't mean that someone who's far from the Kaaba can't have knowledge of the Kaaba's, of the, of the building, of the very building of the Kaaba. It is possible that someone who's far from the Kaaba and can't see the Kaaba still has 100% knowledge. Like if he's an expert in using the North Star. Like if he's an expert at using the North Star. An expert. Being an expert here means not just he knows how to find the North Star. One might know how to find the North Star and still not be an expert. He might find the North Star and then based on what knowledge he does have, what ability he does have, he faces a direction that he thinks is the accurate direction. This fulfills his obligation. Yani, he thinks that he is accurately facing the building of the Kaaba by using the North Star. And someone else, he might be an expert, and he knows that he's facing the building of the Kaaba by the North Star. So according to what is most likely it's not the obligation to just face the direction of the Kaaba. Rather, the obligation is to face the building of the Kaaba. The difference being that anyone close relies on knowledge since he can. And anyone far relies on confidence since he cannot. Yani, since he cannot rely on knowledge. For anyone close, this means he can see the Kaaba. Or... He has knowledge by some other way, like he's an expert at using the North Star. Or for some other way, he has knowledge. And anyone far, and he doesn't have knowledge, anyone who's far, he relies on confidence. So you know what confidence means? Since he cannot rely on knowledge. Uh, so... Maybe someone is such an expert that he can face the Qibla 
using a very exact degree by his tested compass. Using a very exact degree by his tested compass. Because such an expert. And another person is not such an expert. So he can face what he's confident is the direction of the building of the Kaaba. Yani, what he's confident is facing the building of the Kaaba. So if I say direction here, then you know what I mean here. Because the target is the building of the Kaaba, even if I use the word direction. That's the saying we're going by. That's the strong saying in the Shafi'i school. And there's another saying in the Shafi'i school, which is that you can face the direction of the Kaaba. Which is also a saying in other schools. But the strong saying in Shafi'i school is that you have to face the building of the Kaaba, whether you're close or far. The one who's close, like the one who can see the Kaaba, he faces the Kaaba by his knowledge, since he's able to. And anyone who's far and does not have knowledge, then he faces the building of the Kaaba by his confidence. And the Qibla is not Hijr Ismail in particular, which is that segment of the Kaaba. It's like uh, a disconnected segment of the Kaaba. It's not valid just to face that disconnected segment of the Kaaba. The source for this condition is Al-Baqarah 144. الْحَرَامِ Now turn yourself the direction of the sacred masjid, O Muhammad. The shatr. Shatr means direction. The point being that this turning is not mandatory for anything but prayer. Yani, how is this evidence that it's obligatory to face the Kaaba? in the prayer because the turning that's mentioned here in the ayah is not mandatory for anything but prayer so nothing is left yani so by process of elimination it is here this ayah is making it a condition for prayer nothing more by consensus it's not a condition for slaughtering a sacrifice it's not a condition facing the qibla for making dua or something like that so Wahhabi has no proof to forbid you from facing another way while you make dua. Because it's not obligatory to face the Qibla except for the prayer. Because sometimes the Muslims, let's say they bury their dead and they're all around his grave. And then after they bury him, they raise their hands to make dua for him. And then some creep Wahhabi who's there, he says, Oh people, turn away from his grave and face the Qibla for your dua. It's not a condition. It's not haram to be facing the, towards the grave while making dua. And likewise, if one were at the Prophet's grave, and while he was standing there facing the Prophet's grave, he lifted his hands and started making dua. So some Wahhabi would say, no, turn away. Face the Qibla. You don't have to face the Qibla for anything but prayer as an obligation. But there are some things that it's recommended to face the Qibla for. Recommended, like slaughtering a sacrifice. By consensus, this is a condition for prayer by consensus. It's not a consensus that you have to face the exact building if you can't see it. It's a consensus that turning is a condition for prayer. Some said, though, you can just face the direction. And some said you have to face the very building. Both of those sayings fall under this consensus. For anyone who's not unable. It's a condition for prayer for anyone who's not unable. Yani for anyone who is able. Turning in the prayer to the right direction is a condition for anyone who's able. So for anyone who's not unable, it's a condition. And also, for anyone who's not on red alert, for anyone who's not on red alert, it's a condition to face the Qibla. Or for anyone who's not praying voluntarily on a journey, I'll add the word not here, 
for extra clarity. So this word not is covering three things. Not unable, then you have to face the Qibla. Not on red alert, then you have to face the Qibla. Not praying voluntarily on a journey, then you have to face the Kaaba. At Tirmidhi's hadith, ma bayna al-mashriqi wal maghribi qibla. What is between east and west is qibla. Does not deny this consensus. This is for Medina and its surroundings, according to Al-Basir. Yani, according to Al-Basir, this hadith has a context. So it's not denying the consensus. Meaning, you can't take this hadith to say you can face any way you want to face. Whatever's between east and west is a qibla. Or, this hadith is a norm, according to our shaykh. Yani, most of the people, their qibla is between east and west. So that's, so the hadith came as per the norm. So it's not denying this consensus that we are saying. Nor is the consensus disproven by God's word, فَأَيْنَ مَا فَثَمَّ وَجِهُ اللَّهِ Whichever way you turn, then there is the wajah of Allah. This ayah doesn't deny the consensus that we are confirming. Imam As-Suyuti commented in Al-Itqan about this ayah. He said, Had we been left with only the apparent meaning of the expression, It would have dictated that it is not obligatory on the one who prays to face the Qibla. Had we taken this ayah as it appears, then it would not be obligatory to face the Qibla in prayer. Safaran wala hadara, whether traveling or residing. Wa huwa khilaful ijma'ah, which is against the consensus. Yani, taking the ayah that way is against the consensus. So that can't be the way to explain the ayah. Rather, this ayah is about praying voluntarily on a journey. Or it's about an obscure Qibla, confusion, not knowing which way to face because uh, because you don't have definitive proof, like you can't find any proof for the Qibla, or your proofs are conflicting. One, one reference for you leads you to one direction, and another reference for you leads you to another direction, so you don't know which way. Or there's... Uh, clouds and there's no shadows you can't see the sun and you can't see the shadows and you don't know where you are those are just some examples some said this ayah is about that obscure qibla some said this ayah is about praying voluntarily on a journey but whatever it is it doesn't go against the consensus that it is a condition for prayer to turn and face the Kaaba, except in the cases that I hinted at for you. Facing or turning to the Qibla is by directing one's chest, not his face, towards it. His chest. Directing one's chest towards it, not his face. Or directing his chest towards the air over it. Or directing his chest towards the ground beneath it. Some people say, in the United States and Canada, you should face Northeast because at a certain day, at a certain minute during the year, in one spot in Canada, you can see the sun rising from the Northeast when the sun is directly over the Kaaba. So if you face the sun at that moment, you'll be facing the air over the Kaaba. That's delusion. Don't listen to someone who tells you something like that. So, turning the face to Qibla is by directing one's chest and not his face while standing or sitting. So, if you're standing or you're sitting in prayer and your chest is towards the Kaaba, then this is the condition, even if your face is away from the Kaaba. And by most of one's body while bowing and prostrating. There are four steps for facing the Qibla, and skipping a step requires repeating the prayer. Anyone who sees it does not use another way to face it, and sees it or otherwise knows about it. Anyone who sees it or otherwise knows about it, anyone who has knowledge, 
face the Qibla does not use anything else to face it. He must use his knowledge. If not, if he doesn't see it, or otherwise know it, if he doesn't know it in another way, but a trustworthy Muslim who sees it informs him of its direction, he takes that. And he doesn't make any determination. He takes the word of this trustworthy Muslim because this trustworthy Muslim is informing him by knowledge. Also, one unconditionally relies on the Prophet's mihrab. If you are at the Prophet's masjid, alayhi salatu was salam, praying at his mihrab, then you don't make any determination here. Just follow the Prophet's mihrab. Alayhi salatu was salam. SubhanAllah. Look how the Muslims preserved so much from Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They preserved the Quran. They guarded it, Yani. And uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And the Prophet's mihrab in his masjid hasn't been changed. And other things. Even the Prophet's saw, his saw, that's a container. It's a measurement. And other things. And one may rely on the likes of a 300-year-old masjid checked by scholars over the centuries. Checked by scholars over the centuries means no one disagreed with this mihrab. A 300-year-old masjid, meaning the mihrab in there, not only though it's an ancient masjid, but it's been checked by the scholars over the centuries again and again. Not only that, but none of them have disagreed with this Qibla also, this Mihrab. None of them disagreed with it. Because it's possible that there is an ancient masjid and the scholars have prayed there over and over and over again, but one of the masters may have still disagreed with the, with the Mihrab in there. It was said that As-Subki disagreed with the Mihrab of the Umawi Masjid. In such old masjid. So, otherwise, what are you going to do when you go into a masjid? You're going to make your own determination if you can't see the Kaaba or otherwise have knowledge of the Kaaba. And you don't have a trustworthy Muslim who sees it informed and informs you. Then you're not going to rely on the mihrab merely, which is what most of the people do. So you need to teach the people. In fact, if someone saw you go into a masjid and not merely rely on the mihrab there, he'll stop you. He'll say, what are you doing? Why don't you put that compass away? So then teach him. So if not, so he neither has knowledge, nor is he informed by a trusty Muslim, and he doesn't have the Prophet's mihrab or the like, like in a new masjid, so he can't merely rely on that, or in someone's home, so he can't merely rely on that person's ijtihad in his house and he doesn't see the Kaaba and he doesn't have a trustworthy person who informs him. Then one performs ijtihad for his Qibla. Yeah, since um, so the Ummawi Masjid, since Subki disagreed with it, we may not, the Shafi'is said, we may not rely on it merely. Just take it with no uh, double checking. As Subki, some said he's mujtahid mutlaq, absolute mujtahid. So if someone is lacking the first two steps, then he performs ijtihad for his qibla. And he does that for each prayer if he cannot rely on the previous determination. As long as you can rely on your previous determination, then you don't have to make a new determination. That means at some place, like in your house. Why you don't have to keep checking the Qibla over and over and over in your house? Because you're relying on the previous determination. But if for some reason you can't rely on your previous determination, then you make a new one. And you need to do it for every prayer if you can't rely on the previous determination, the previous ijtihad. Targeting the building itself. That's your goal, your target. The building itself, not Mecca. So some people might say, 
we face Mecca in our prayers. So that saying is not most accurate. Even though you're so far, if you're so far away from the Kaaba, you won't be able to make a difference between facing the Kaaba and facing Mecca. But it's not the rule that we're facing Mecca. Not according to this strong saying in the Shafiri school. Rather, we're facing, we want to face the Kaaba. Not Mecca, nor something else. Relying on the religiously recognized Kipler proofs. The religiously recognized Kipler proofs. So be aware of the sayings of those who work in the field of astronomy. Uh, they might use what's not Kipler proof. Or geography or mathematics. They might use what's not Kipler proof. Religiously recognized Kipler proofs like the stars. Most reliably the Polaris. Most reliably the Polaris. That's the most reliable star. Because it's always in the same spot. And the sun is a Kipler proof. Also, you need to have some practice so you can use the sun. Because it doesn't rise from the same spot every day and it doesn't set in the same spot every day. And other aerial signs and landmarks. Other stars and landmarks like mountains and buildings, villages. If you know your area, for example, then you can use other landmarks, like I just told you. Mountains or buildings or villages or like that. You'd say, this village is west of me. This town is to the east or like this. This mountain is in the north. So like if you're in the city, for example, you might use the street signs. You might say, uh, these street signs you have here 40th Street, 41st Street, 42nd Street, 43rd Street. In my town, as these numbers get higher, it means you're going west. And as they get lower, it means you're going east. That's valid. So how could they tell which is which, the Kaaba versus Mecca, when being far away? You don't have to tell the difference. Just don't seek Mecca. Seek the Kaaba. That's your target. East is the Qibla of anyone west of the Kaaba. West is the direction of anyone east. North is the direction of anyone south. And south is the, the, is the direction of anyone north. That is the consensus stated by Imam Abu Hanifa. Learning its indicators, the, the proofs of the Qibla, is a communal obligation when residing. and a personal obligation on a journey. Because on a journey, uh, you're going to be more susceptible to confusion because you don't know your surroundings. So then on a journey, knowing the Kipler proofs is a personal obligation. If what overrides one's had, which is personal observation, or being informed by someone reliable who observes it. If what overrides one's ijtihad determines the ijtihad as false, then one repeats. Yani, he needs to start over if he was in the middle of the prayer. Even in the midst of his prayer, he's just going to start over. Yani, we're saying he made ijtihad and then he started praying. And while he's praying, he obtained knowledge. And his knowledge, by his knowledge, he knew that his ijtihad was off. This knowledge will invalidate his ijtihad. Now he needs to fix his kibla and start over again. Even in the midst of prayer. But not merely for a new ijtihad. Not merely for a new ijtihad. Yani, a new ijtihad will not invalidate your previous ijtihad. What's going to invalidate your ijtihad is something that overrides ijtihad, which is the knowledge. Or being informed by someone reliable who has knowledge. 
This overrides Ijtihad, because Ijtihad is the third rank. First rank is to have knowledge, like seeing the Kaaba. Second rank is to be informed by some trusty person who has knowledge. To be informed by someone trusty who has knowledge. That's second rank. This, both of those two ranks override Ijtihad, meaning invalidated. But Ijtihad does not override Ijtihad. So if you made a new Ijtihad and determined that your first one was off, you don't have to repeat your prayer. Not even in the midst of prayer, meaning even if you're in the middle of your prayer, you made an Ijtihad to face the Qibla. And in the middle of your prayer, you made a new Ijtihad and determined that your first one was off. So what do you do? Just adjust yourself in your prayer and you don't have to start over. So you might need that detail there. According to that, it is possible to pray a single four rakat prayer in four directions. According to that, it is possible to pray a four rakat prayer, one four rakat prayer, each rakat in a different direction. That's possible. If one's had does not lead to anything confident. So no direction is more confident. He's not more confident about one direction than another. Then he prays whichever way he wants. But don't forget the judgment in Shafi'i school and Hanafi school and Maliki school is that it is a condition to face what you are most confident is correct. And it is invalid to turn away from what you are most confident is correct, even if you wound up facing the Kaaba actually. Even if you wound up facing the Kaaba actually. Very important there. With that rule, you're not going to let a person who doesn't want to face the right way tell you something wrong to justify his mistake. And he'll say, ah, no, in the Hanafi school, you have this much room for error. And in Maliki school, you don't have to regard this and that. Uh, whatever, 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 Yani. Those schools said if you turn away from what you deem is most, Yanni, what you are more most confident is the most accurate way. If you turn away from that on purpose, your prayer is invalid, even if you wound up facing the Kaaba. Just like if you prayed without knowing the time. If you prayed without knowing the time is in, your prayer will be invalid, even if the time was in. Wait, I think I repeated it. Did you get it, inshallah? Do you need me to repeat again? Are you asking me about B? If one's ijtihad does not lead to anything confident, yeah, because he doesn't have knowledge, or else he wouldn't be making ijtihad. So he doesn't have knowledge, so he resorts to ijtihad. He also doesn't have a trusty informant uh, who has knowledge. So he resorts to ijtihad, and his ijtihad doesn't lead him to anything confident. Then he prays whichever way he wants. Okay. And who needs that? The one who is not sure about the exact degree. So many people ask me, which degree do you face on the compass? I don't rely on the exact degree because I'm not that much of an expert. I'm not more confident that this degree is the degree. I'm just confident that it's a little bit south of east and not too far. Then once I get to a point that if I go further than that, like I'll face east. And then I'll turn a little to the south. If I go too far, I won't be confident that I'll, yani, I'll be afraid it's too far. If I go too close to the east, I'll be afraid it's not enough, so I'm not confident. And if I go too much to the right, 
go towards the south. I'm afraid it's too much. So I'm not confident. So then I'll put myself in a position where I'm confident and then I pray. And I don't say this degree. Uh, and the rule according to the Malikis and the Hanafis and the Shafi'is is that it's obligatory on you to face what you are most confident is the accurate direction. And if you turn away from what you are most confident is the accurate direction, then your prayer is invalid even if you faced the Kaaba itself, actually. Just like if you didn't know if the prayer time was in and then you prayed, your prayer is invalid even if the prayer time was in. Is that clear? If there is no time for Ijtihad, yeah, I mean, the time's going to go out. Or he is confused about the right way. Then one prays whichever way he wants and then repeats. And he does not mimic anyone. He's not, he doesn't copy anyone since he's able to perform Ijtihad. Yani he's still in the third level. He can't go down to the fourth level because he's still in the third level able to make his own determination. Although there's no time, or although he's confused, still he's not yet qualified to go to the next level, which is to copy someone else. So in this case, he prays whichever way he wants, and he repeats later when he determines his direction, and he doesn't copy anyone. And not to mention that it's possible that his confusion clears up and then comes clear for him. So he doesn't copy anyone here. If two people came to contrary conclusions, meaning not the same, contrary here means not the same, they must not pray together. That's Shafiri school. Since each is confident that the other's direction is not accurate. You know what confidence means. You've been following those lessons. So it's very important. that Those lessons about knowledge and confidence and doubt and skepticism and, and ignorance are very important. It will help you to be able to understand a lot of the religion and a lot of religious judgments. What's confidence mean? Confidence means you think you're right. Confidence means your being mistaken is unlikely to you. So you cannot pray with someone when you're confident that your direction is right. And he has a different direction because you're being confident that your direction is right. And he has a different direction means you're confident that he's wrong. So you can't face that way with him. You can't pray with him. And he has the same thing. He's confident that he's right, which means he's confident that you're wrong. So he can't follow you. This is correct judgment in the Shafi'i school. And it's not a fitna. There's nothing bad with this. Or there's nothing bad about this. It's just like, Yani, remember, when it comes to the Qibla, you're a mujtahid if you're in this level. And a mujtahid cannot follow another mujtahid who makes his own ijtihad. If one cannot make ijtihad, that means he's unable. Or, uh, nor can he learn, according to this being a personal obligation, like someone blind or someone retarded, then he mimics a reliable person without having to repeat. Even if that reliable person is a slave or a woman. Mimic here means faces the Qibla according to them. And if one cannot turn like an unaided cripple, like he's in bed, he can't turn. Or he's even on the floor, for example, he can't turn. He's crippled and he doesn't have someone to help him. If someone cannot turn like an unaided cripple or someone who's bound, he's tied to a pillar or the likes of that, 
he's chained to a gate, for example. Or someone who's stuck on a floating plank. Stuck on a floating plank. Your ship went down and you're just there in the water. Your feet's in the water and your arms are around the floating plank. Then, yeah, I mean, and, and you need to pray. So you have to pray. You got the water right there. You can make wudu, inshallah. It shouldn't be too hard. But you can't turn the face of Qibla. So, or if he's too scared for his life to turn and face the Qibla. Or he's too scared for his money to dismount his animal and then face the Qibla. Or he's afraid to get left behind. Then he prays as he is and he repeats later due to the rarity of his case. Since this turning is a condition, its absence, yani not facing the Qibla, renders the prayer invalid even if someone is moved away. Yani, even if someone moved you, someone turned you. That's why you can't turn someone in the masjid or the musalla if he's not facing the right way. Because you're going to invalidate his prayer if his prayer was valid. If he made his own ijtihad and he faced the way he's facing and yani, you can't just go up and take his shoulders and turn him. You're going to invalidate his prayer. Even if just a little, that's going to invalidate his prayer. And it is permissible to pray without facing the Kaaba in two cases, but we're going to save those two cases, inshallah, for next time. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Any questions?